I am Keeper of TaskBot, and TaskBot's actually going to be showing us what is being pressed in Celeste, thanks to a lot of work by Uni, who is the main tasser here. I'm going to throw it over pretty quick, but before I do, I want to tell you guys thank you so much. $175,000. Thank you. Just like before, I am going to be handing off because Uni and the rest of the team here has done how many thousand? 20,000 hours on this? I'm ridiculous. No. 2,000. <laughs> Definitely well over 2,000. Yeah, well over. <laughs> okay, maybe I added a couple zeros there for a fact, but you get the idea. It has been a lot of work, many, many, many re-records. A lot of effort and love went into this, and you're going to experience that. I'm going to pass my headset and my microphone over to Kevin, who is part of making this happen. And that is so awesome that he's here with Power Up Audio. Thank you so much. I'm going to hand this over to Uni, and I'll let her describe what's going on here. So I'm Uni. Everyone else want to introduce themselves? Uh, I'm Fish McMuffins. I was one of the. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I was one of the taskers for this game. I run a variety of other games, and I'm here to commentate. I'm Babai. I'm a R R RTA runner, and I. I've touched the RB, ARB test a little bit, a not little too bit. much. I'm TGH. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. No, that's fine. Uh, I'm TGH. I run pretty much, pretty much every category in Celeste uh, as an RTA runner. You know who he is. I know nothing about tasking, but <laughs> but sure. <laughs> Sometimes indistinguishable. <laughs> I'm Kevin, as Dwango said. Uh, I'm here with Power Up Audio, but I was the head sound designer on this game alongside Lena Rain on music, who killed it. So I don't task at all. <laughs> I don't task at all, but I try to inject myself into the speedrunning scene wherever I can. And I'm just stoked to see this happen. So thanks so much. Mm -hmm. oh. All right, so I think we're going to start by going over um, some of the ways to actually get around in this game uh, uh, fast. All right, so first off, you have your normal dash cancel, which is uh, basically pressing dash and jump at the same time. Uh, simple stuff. Uh, you have your hyper dash, which is the same thing, basically, except you're crouching. Uh, so it'll give you a little bit of a lower jump, uh, lower, faster, longer, covers more distance. Uh, jump, you can also do something called extending that hyper dash. So if you actually separate your dash and your jump input uh, by <laughs> somewhere between 10 and 15 frames, there's a five frame window, you have your dash back in midair, uh, just like any's doing. Uh, in addition to that, you can do something called ultra dashing. Uh, so it's a continuation of an extended hyper dash uh, where you dash downward diagonally in the direction you're going. And what that does is it actually chains the momentum and it makes it so that it doesn't stop um, as soon as the dash ends like it would in any other direction. And I think that's it. Uh, should we have a wall, wall bouncing or up? Or up uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so you can dash upward alongside a wall and press jump off the wall and it'll give you an extended uh, height and distance. Mm -hmm. um, what else? What am I missing? F think that's yeah, all. Think that's about it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Awesome. So all intended. You're gonna see all that done in like <laughs> ten times in three seconds. And what's to come here? You guys are gonna enjoy this. Okay. So how about we get a countdown from five, five, four, four three, three, two, two one. one. Uh. Duh. What? Oh. What? <laughs> oh. Um. One second. Uh, so I would love to say that that's never happened before, but that's <laughs> happened a lot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Five, four, four three, three, two, one. one. All right. So now the task bot is. <laughs> Now the taskbot's done uh, manipulating the RNG, uh, <laughs> so we can get started. Uh, the first thing you're going to see here is that we're jumping a lot off the ground and off the top of walls. Those are called bunny hops and corner boosts, respectively. And those both give a small speed boost, so you just see we're jumping as much as possible. Each jump here saves two frames. You can do this, taskbot. <laughs> 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 
So figure we might as well start by how these berries work. You have to be on the ground for nine consecutive frames to collect a berry. And this leads to some interesting rooting. So in around 40 seconds, we have to take an intentional death. And that means we have to put a lot of work into rooting, okay, where is exactly the fastest place to collect a berry? However, after that intentional death, uh, at the end of a chapter, berries automatically collect, so we don't actually have to worry about collecting berries anymore, and we end up with a pretty big train of berries behind us. <laughs> um, worth mentioning in a second here, we're actually going to take a little detour and grow grab a heart. Since this is all red berries, there are five berries in core that are of interest to us. And to get into core, we need four of the crystal hearts, so one of them's coming up here. We're entering a little password to unlock it, and there's our first heart. And the death warp there was to skip the cutscene where the heart spawned. That's worth noting as well. Um, an RTA run would actually save and quit after getting that heart. However, uh, this task has been modified uh, to be uh, RTA compliant. Uh, so yeah, we don't. We actually don't care about real time really on the leaderboards uh, for for human runs. But uh, everything's IGT. But this task has been modified for RTA for GDQ specifically. All right, so coming up in a second, you're going to see a really interesting strat. <laughs> so those were demo dashes. Don't worry, we'll explain how those work in a few chapters, but just remember that for now. Not intended. <laughs> <laughs> you sure? I'm, I'm sure on that okay, one, yeah, okay. that was not known. Okay. I thought everything was intended. <laughs> the discoveries are intended. So you'll notice that berry over there was um, a wing berry. That just means that any time we dash when there's a wing berry on screen, it'll fly away. So there's a little bit of tricky routing with that involved. Like we have to be entering the screen with a lot of speed. Oh yeah, and that that's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so humans go over there and Tass just goes under. This is Tass. How much faster even is that? A fair bit. <laughs> fair bit. <laughs> About half a second in real time. Gotcha. <laughs> so old site is different from every other level in that there is a cutscene at the end of a level that you actually can't take berries through. I believe that's going We're to be fixed. It's already fixed. It's fixed yesterday. I'm glad. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you, Kevin. You can thank Noel for that one. I didn't do anything. Um. <laughs> Actually, I should explain cutscene skip coming up here. When you skip a cutscene, your Y position stays the same, so you just appear in the dream block. Yeah, it saves a little bit of time climbing. So what I was saying about berries is that uh, at, the, at the end of a the level, the, there's a cutscene that takes the berries away, so we have to find places throughout the level to collect all the berries. There are 11 berries that we have to worry about collecting, and we're able to actually collect all 11 berries while only losing seven frames. Which is very impressive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, some interesting hitboxes coming up here. <laughs> that shouldn't work. I don't know why that works. It shouldn't work. <laughs> yeah, our hitbox goes right through battle line. It's interesting. It's a thing. <laughs> Guess we should start explaining ultras, uh, delayed ultras now. So, you saw ultras when we were setting up. And you, when you do an ultra, you get a 1.2 times speed boost when you hit the ground. A delayed ultra is rather similar. You dash down diagonally, but then you corner boost out of a dash. And when you land from that corner boost, you'll still get a 1.2 times speed boost. Now, this all goes really fast, and it's really hard to see it, but we can use this to gain a lot of speed on relatively flat ground, and you'll see that become relevant very quickly. We did explain what corner boosts are, right? Yes. Okay, cool, all right, just making sure. <laughs> Yeah, 
Yeah, so that's the cutscene right there that Yenny was talking about where you can't actually take the race through. All right, um, and watch this. Yeah, this is insane. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, on the way there, we have to take a little detour and get this berry, but with a cheeky little spike jump, we can get it nice and quick. Yeah, and that's the only place in the game where we can chain five ultra dashes. <laughs> There's an interesting strat at the beginning of the resort here. I think it's about a tenth of a second faster to do this incredibly precise dash up to this platform. <laughs> so we were talking about delayed ultras earlier, and if you missed it, you're going to see a few more right here to carry an absurd amount of speed through these next couple of rooms. Watch the next screen very closely. <laughs> so we mentioned that earlier, that's a demo dash. Celeste doesn't actually check what direction you're dashing in until the fifth frame of your dash. However, if you press down on the first frame of your dash, you'll be ducking during the dash. And if you aren't pressing down during the fifth frame, you can dash in any direction with a crouching hitbox. And it's a nice coincidence, the distance between those dust bunnies is exactly the same height as Madeline's crouching hitbox. So we can just dash through them. And you might have noticed there a little, um... Another application of the demo dash is that uh, if you demo dash and then, uh, so if you demo dash from, this is kind of hard to explain, you demo dash underneath a wall, and by the time your dash is over, uh, the hitbox is not crouched anymore. So you can actually wall kick off the other side. Yeah, basically Madeline uncrouches in the air and her back is touching the wall and she can do a wall jump. <laughs> also, that's the thing right there. <laughs> Yeah, worth noting, demos are humanly possible. They're not very humanly practical. There are a few that humans go for. Yeah, but... usually if a human goes for it, it has a setup of some sort. <laughs> and when working on this task, we would find a demo that would save a lot of time, and it would be like, well, can humans find a setup for this? Sometimes the answer is yes, sometimes it's no. So this is the first major root difference between the TAS and RTA. So there are three paths in Huge Mess that you can do in any order. So the any percent does bottom, then top, then middle. But, <laughs> <laughs> but shout out to Problem Stroll for finding a trick coming up very shortly that allows us to warp from the middle section to the top section and skip talking Oshiro to once. It saves around eight seconds for the task. Yeah, so what's actually happening here is uh, on this screen right here. Okay, so we're going to leave the screen to the left after getting the heart. And the game doesn't really expect you to kick back up. So what it does is it just, um, because there's no designated spawn point for that entrance to the screen, it spawns you at the nearest spawn point, uh, which happens to be uh, upward. And you can actually skip talking to Oshiro, going back to the main huge mess room and talking to Oshiro once. So TAS does middle, top, bottom. Humans do bottom, top, middle. It's, that's three seconds slower for the TAS. It hasn't been properly timed RTA, but it's just really awkward. Mm -hmm. Mainly the screen coming up here. There's not really any platforms to land on. This one. <coughs> and this one. But yeah, huge mess routing was one thing that took quite a bit. Um, there's just a lot of paths we can take, so we had to time. There's a few that we could just kick out immediately, but we had to time a lot of them. Yeah, there's some clever routing right there where we pick up a key, put it in the door, and then leave to get a berry. Yeah, that's the main reason why this uh, route saves time, because we don't have to wait for the door to open. This berry has given me adrenaline rushes because I thought the task was going to die before. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I really love how, <laughs> I love how uh, the Tass gets the berry and still finds a way to demo dash twice. Oh no, we missed the berry. Oh no, Tass bug, go back. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, I think he figured it out. <laughs> So it's about three seconds faster for Vitas to skip getting the key and just dash through these dust bunnies instead. That saves a lot of time in any percent. Around 12 seconds. <laughs> yeah, some, it's up to the runner whether they go for it in all red berries. I haven't seen a lot of these demo dashes. This is so sick. Yeah, in Tess, there is pretty much no limit to what Demo Dash we can do. Where in real time, you got to be real picky. It either has to have a setup or has to save a bunch of time. This next room is definitely something. <laughs> so sick. So, um, how close is that to missing the dash crystal in that last room? That last screen? Probably around a tenth of a pixel. A tenth of a pixel. And that's all red berries will go in five minutes. All right, right here, this is my favorite level. I think almost everyone here is mm -hmm. favorite level in the test. What's up, though? Everyone else hates wind, though. <laughs> Only task players like wind. <laughs> yeah, wind is interesting. <laughs> wind is interesting because if it's against you, you move a lot faster when you're dashing against the wind, and you actually move slower when you're dashing with the wind. Uh, we're coming up to a, actually, I'll wait a sec. Very important strategy coming up. Archie! Archie! So the next berry is a seeded berry. We have to collect all the seeds to get the berry to collect, and we're not supposed to touch the ground here. You're supposed to lose the seeded berries if you touch the ground. But if you land on the ground and then fall off of it, the game's generous and allows you to keep the berries, and the task abuses that. A theme with tasking this game is whenever the developers were uh, being generous with, like, letting some, you be a little bit off with, like, an input or something, we can push that to the limits. Watch There's this some berry. crazy yep. movement. <laughs> yeah, we don't need those moving platforms. <laughs> <laughs> this next berry is my favorite this in the game. Really cool. <laughs> and then you'll see in the next room there's a white block. That's a reference to SMB3. You're supposed to hold down on the block for a few seconds, and you're suddenly moving around the background of this stage. We do that. Yo, I tried that for so long during development. I couldn't do it. You should have tried harder. <laughs> There's a cool auto-scroller skip in the next screen, and there's a jump at the end of it that you might want to pay attention to. Right there, we jumped off the bottom of a wall. That's possible because the game sometimes just doesn't move you up far enough when you grab a wall, and you can just jump off a wall even though it's not there. Also, there's some kind of interesting movement at the end of the next screen. So that looked a little weird. That, that was us doing a delayed ultra to gain a little bit of more speed entering the next screen. Because of the time it takes to set up, it's usually not worth it, but it does save time there. Nice little death warp here. <clears throat> All right, coming up in this next screen, uh, there's an auto scroller here. We don't like auto scrollers. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Kalei for finding that one. The TAS has its own auto-scroller. <laughs> <laughs> so the next very, there are a couple moving platforms. We interact with these in a unconventional way. So yes, those were two spike jumps. I would explain them, except we're about to get a third spike jump on this next screen. Yeah, watch this. Cliff face is definitely one of the better parts of this task. 
Yeah, this took forever to find a good route for her. And one more spike jump off spike of the jump, wall right spike here. Spike jump! Yeah! So good! <laughs> Best jump in the game. So how much time does that save? Like 0.1. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Not even. Yeah. Probably not even that. A couple frames. <clears throat> we made sure that that jump was in the ad for Celeste this, uh, this marathon. <laughs> so how those spike jumps worked is Either if the wind pushes you into spikes or a moving platform pushes spikes into you, the spikes don't actually kill you, and you can just jump off of stuff. Uh, the start of Mirror Temple here is definitely one of the more frustrating parts to test. There were probably 20 separate routes tested in this section alone. I'm not joking. Yeah, and in general, um, Mirror Temple, while one of the best levels in a test, it is very painful. There is so many routes for every section. Probably my favorite level, too, in Oh, speaking of sections. spike jumps... <laughs> yeah, that one's a little different because it has uh, these spinner spikes instead of normal spikes, and those actually give you your dash back when you jump off of them. All right, so coming up here is an interesting segment. Uh, a human would go to the left and get those brace first, then come back, get this one later. Uh, there's a very specific reason that the task gets that very first. Um, so we're going to use a block. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to use this block right here to come back and do this. I tried yeah, to make new. that one RTA viable. It didn't work. <laughs> I wonder why. I wonder why. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this next fairy coming up is definitely a fan favorite. <laughs> Yeah, that was another one of those little uh, wall jumps that happened underneath a wall. Yeah, we call them ceiling pops. I like the name, not sure who came up with it, but... <laughs> right, so coming up, actually, uh, the task is going to go a different route here than from what humans do. It saves, what, like 0.3 seconds or something? Uh, less than that. Less than that. Around three frames. <laughs> uh, something like that. Yeah, so we get the berries in a specific order here uh, in order to take this moving platform over here on the left uh, at the end of the segment to gain huge momentum and basically pretty much skip the entirety of the platforming in the next room. And I want you guys to say this with me. Ready? Yay! Yay! Yeah. <laughs> Depth corner boost. <laughs> Does it have the same ring to it? <laughs> Never seated Barry in this room. Again, we're not supposed to touch the ground here, but we do an extended hyper here anyway. And we have four berries behind us. Next berry, we're going to do a death warp after. We have a little bit of time to wait for that platform right there. So let's collect the berries then. I think now, if there are any, uh, would be a good time for donations. Yeah, a, yeah. a bit of relatively mm -hmm. tame movement here. <laughs> All right, I have $35 from Dave Stereo, who's behind the stage right now. Says, greetings from Camera Tech. Had to show some love during the Celeste task. Celeste is such a special game, and I'm so proud of everything this community has accomplished. Thank you for being some of the coolest friends ever, and let's keep celebrating this amazing game. Thank you so much, Dave. Thanks, Dave. We're Thanks, proud yeah. of you, Dave. Also, I've got a bit of fun one. $250 from Listy that says, Go Taskbot, go Taskbot, go, go, go Taskbot, go Taskbot, go Taskbot, go, go. <laughs> Thank you very much, Listy. It's going. <laughs> you can fit another one in. 
All right, and of course, this one's referring to the Dark Souls glitch exhibition that we got coming up. Uh, we're at a pretty good amount, 18,000 out of the 60,000, and it's from John M194. They donated $250 and said, just say, praise the sun. So coming up here, we have the first appearance of Seekers. Seekers move around somewhat erratically and like to dash at Madeline. And we have to manipulate one to get this berry here. There's one of our Seeker we have to manipulate later in the level, and manipulating those Seekers to move quickly was probably the most painful part of this task. <laughs> Really nice corner boost. <laughs> I love this screen. <laughs> All right, coming up here is a, another section called Search. This section is also a nightmare to test because of a cycle we're re not really going to talk about, but there's a lot of moving parts here. It's just about impossible to save a single frame on this checkpoint because of a lot of miscellaneous stuff regarding how keys rotate. <laughs> that demo dash is done by humans, actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it actually messes up the camera, a funny little side effect of it. That setup was found by Nero. Shout out to him. Yeah. Yeah, shout out to Nero. They found a ton of really good setups that are actually possible. <laughs> And coming up, this next berry. <laughs> that is five frames slower. But we have to wait for the cycle anyway, so might as well show off a little bit. Yeah, so the cycle they're talking about is actually in a couple screens from now. It's in uh, this screen right here. So yeah, because of the way keys work, uh, because of the way it's facing, it can actually take longer. And yeah, it makes that possible. Yeah, if right we there. were to yeah. go one frame faster in the entirety of search, we would, the seeker in that room would dash it to us. And we're coming up to Theo, one of the best parts of a task. Theo cancels a dash, which means if you dash downward into Theo, you can use him to interrupt your dash and get the speed boost from the ultra. And yeah, <laughs> just watch. The, yeah, the last time this uh, uh, Celeste Pass was shown at a GDQ, this section was the fan favorite. You can probably see why. <laughs> now you're just showing right. off. You're, you're correct. So check this out right here. No! So... <laughs> <laughs> Those demos save two frames. <laughs> And it's time to deliver Theo into an eyeball. <laughs> so I guess you might be wondering how that spike clip worked. Um, so basically, the long story short, one frame you're on the left of the spikes, <laughs> the next frame you're on the right side of the spikes. <laughs> it's that simple. So. Uh... In about, oh wait. So this feather, uh, we took some kind of weird movement out of that feather. It actually is faster to hold diagonal on either D-pad or the keyboard on the first frame of feather movement. It just gives you a bigger speed boost. I love this next screen right here. <laughs> Check this out. <laughs> what? <laughs> So normally we call those Kevins, but I think they're covert muffins now. Covert blocks, let's go. <laughs> covert blocks. <laughs> and <laughs> watch this very carefully. <laughs> That's great. I can't believe you did that. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> All right. So here, actually, we're going to play the B side of Reflection. Uh, that's because this level at the end of it has a heart and is actually a little bit faster to play than 6A. And this is great. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it took me a second to realize what was going on. <laughs> Yeah, very few people knew we were doing that. It was on a need-to-know basis. <laughs> so what Fish was saying is that a watch vest. <laughs> 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 
So that wasn't a demo dash. We literally just jumped through spikes on that last screen. And it just so happens that with absurdly precise positioning, you can just crouch jump through spikes occasionally. What Fish was saying is that... I can't even try to comment. <laughs> this guy's out for your job. <laughs> <laughs> so, 6A does not have any berries in it. <laughs> 6A does not have any berries in it, so we don't have to collect any berries, and that means we can take advantage of an oversight where completing the B side of a chapter actually unlocks the next A side. And it happens that 6B is faster for Vitalis to complete anyway, and it gets us a crystal heart so we can skip one earlier. And at the end of each screen, we end up going really fast. You can jump every frame in the water, and each jump gives you a small speed boost, and we call that a water boost. On the next screen here, we could just demo directly to the end of a screen, but it's actually faster to go a bit out of the way to do a water boost here and preserve speed into the next screen. So we're entering the battle in fight. You just have to hit battle in until she flies off the next screen, and this has some excellent strats here. <laughs> A lot of strats Especially this next screen. A lot of strats involving falling blocks from the ceiling, as you can see. I feel like the best way to describe how Vitas plays this level is just the intended strat is lava. <laughs> On this next screen, we've been using this throughout the task, but we're able to we're able to jump off this Kevin twice and get covert, two covert. speed boosts from uh. covert. We're able to jump off that covert uh. twice and get two speed boosts from it, and that allows us to just jump over pretty much the whole <laughs> the whole screen. <laughs> And we've been using that throughout the entire task, getting as many as four boosts off of blocks in some places. We got three right there. We had to put one fake one in for you, you know, a little throwback. <laughs> so this next screen is the best cycle of the task. This is not RTA viable. <laughs> that cycle's pretty cool, too. <laughs> Get some love for Covert Muffin being a good sport, too. Thanks a lot, man. Thank you. That was great. <laughs> the very first part of that cycle is technically possible, by which I mean I did it once after trying for an hour and a half. <laughs> So we have two dashes now. There's a cutscene in 6A where you get two dashes. We skipped that. Fortunately, you still have two dashes. <laughs> and really, the only thing you need to know about Summit is that there are 47 berries in this chapter. worth talking about the way that Summit is laid out. Um, as we progress up areas of the Summit, we get remixes of areas we've previously seen. So like right here, we'll have a remix of Forsaken City. Yeah, unfortunately, at the beginning of each section, you are forced to collect a berry. Also, uh, just great touch. I really like how the music changes slightly for each section. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Selena Rain. She did a great job on this game. Soundtrack is amazing.
You have a really good speed conservation throughout on this next stream. <laughs> Kalei is really good at finding things like that that just allow us to conserve speed in places that we really did not think was possible. For these dream blocks uh, that we're dashing through in this section, uh, whenever we leave a dream block, generally it's fastest to do two jumps out of the dream block, one right when we leave it, and then another one right in the air. It's kind of hard to see. You can maybe hear both of the jump sounds happening, but it gives us a pretty significant speed boost out of dream blocks. It has to do them both really quickly together, so you might not be able to see them as well. I love this. This, uh, this next berry, Varut here, I just completely missed this in the first version of his task. Someone in the YouTube comments just suggested that, and it saves two seconds. <laughs> you can also hype out of dream blocks, as you saw there. Yeah, the game treats it as if you're on the ground, the frame you exit the dream block. So that makes that possible. And now we're entering 1500, which Can it's my favorite part of Summit. There are, a, there are one or two demos in this section. I love how you just kind of like lose sight of Madeline there. Like, <laughs> where'd she go? Foreshadowing. <laughs> this cycle on the next screen is probably the most precise in the entire task. We have zero frames to spare here. <laughs> that is even closer than it looks. Cool route coming up here. I love this screen. <laughs> and... So fortunately, the task tools we use allow us to pause at any point. <laughs> Very glad that's possible. <laughs> so let's get started again. So this berry, it's actually three frames faster for Vitas the Death Warp it. We don't do that because of berries. <laughs> and this screen just gives a really good vantage point of how many berries we have. <laughs> 2,000 meters is another really good part. There's another strat. Absurd speed conservation strat found by Kalei. <laughs> and then uh, this auto scroller skip is pretty well known in the community. <laughs> Shoutouts to Babai for the end of that screen, one of about two seconds of input he has in this task. <laughs> Thank you. So if you watch closely, we jumped seven times at the end of that screen. We haven't talked about stamina, but if you jump more than four, you aren't supposed to be able to jump more than four times off a wall while grabbing before you run out of stamina. We did it seven. That abuses a mechanic which the devs confusingly call a wall boost. And a wall boost is you press a you jump off a wall, and if you press away from the wall, the game treats it as if you try to jump away from the wall and gives you back your stamina. And of course, the task completely abuses that. Yeah, so coming up is actually a, a breakable wall on the left that 
uh, until like actually somewhat recently. <laughs> Uh, we thought you couldn't break that wall uh, without the bubble. Yeah, the first version of the task, the day after it was released, someone just asked me, hey, why didn't you jump off a wall? And I was like, wait, you can jump off that wall? <laughs> to be fair, it's the only breakable wall that was like that, so mm -hmm. understandable. <clears throat> and then we have a couple skips coming up here. This one isn't intended. <laughs> Okay, and this room... The, the other side oh. is intent. Okay, wait for it. Look at the very bottom two tiles, the very bottom of the spikes. Also, watch the key here. <laughs> that last room, we literally made the key skippable for any percent, and the very not skippable for 100 percent. So, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so, at this point, we've collected... I believe we haven't collected any of the berries. <laughs> valid run, valid run. I believe we have not collected any berries from the Forsaken City section of Summit. <laughs> and got another really good vantage point of the berry train coming up here. Just keeps going. <laughs> you expect it to stop and it just doesn't. Yeah. That berry train actually lags some people's computers. It's hilarious. Yeah. Uh, when I was uh, streaming the first version of this task, my game was running at like 15 FPS there. <laughs> We're entering the downwind section of this, the task. A nice property of downwind is that if the wind pushes you into spikes, you can jump off of them. So we just did free spike jumps there. And there are four more coming up here. <laughs> In case you're wondering, by the way, all of this is completely RTA <laughs> Hey, so what's <laughs> the IL record for Summit ARB? <laughs> Uh, 11.46, I think? Yeah, 11.47, keep that in mind. <laughs> I think this beats it by a little bit. A little bit. Fair warning, it skips like the next four. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this one's great. Yeah, watch this. <laughs> what? By the way, I, w I was kidding about the Arche viable thing. <laughs> In case it was obvious, also cool thing, it's actually faster to skip the orb here. It also skips a collecting a berry, which is obviously more important. <laughs> Take that, memers. <laughs> why have spikes? Hey, occasionally they're positioned well enough to block us. Okay, flag one is unironically the single hardest part of a game to task. And we did not have to do this, but we knew everybody wanted to see this. But we're not quite done yet. We still have to do core and get five more berries to finish out the run. And for anybody wondering, you have to come collect five berries and complete core. We get that question a lot. <laughs> so the main gimmick of core is, uh, so once you get past this point, uh, your dashes don't actually replenish when you touch the ground. You have to either screen transition or you have to collect the green dash crystals in order to get that back. And there's a pretty major skip coming up here. Saves around 30 seconds. And 
normally you're supposed to go several screens out of a way to hit a switch that turns this entire area to ice. Instead, we do this. That saves about 25 seconds. Yeah, we do a version of that. Oh, not that version, but uh, <laughs> uh, in, in human runs as well. Saves about 35 seconds. Yeah. And similar to the, the key and berry thing in the Mirror Temple part of Summit. There's another the, uh, really cool skip here. We skip that switch, just skips about two seconds of backtracking here. Uh, what were you saying? I was saying the ice list in that section was intended for any percent, but it was not intended for the berry again. So again, thanks for that. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, Calais mainly worked on the any percent version of his tasks. A lot of stuff he found is relevant to this, but also found a bunch of stuff in core, specifically that screen. Used to be just horribly slow, but... Yeah. In general, core is kind of a nightmare to optimize because we have to think of the best location to use all of our dashes. Yeah, also just movement while Madeline's moving slowly is really hard. We're corner boosting twice at the top of most of these corners. You'll also see we do a little turnaround at the top of a lot of these corners. And I think we saved seven seconds off this task, not from strat changes, but just from micro-optimizations all over the place. It's that hard to optimize. This one's pretty good. So there's a one pixel window off the side of lava where you can actually wall jump off the lava. But if you do it at the very top, you can corner boost. And it looks absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> Also, I really like how, before we collected those two berries, we had every single berry in core at the same time. Yep, so to finish out the run, we now, well, not yet, because they're not actually collected, uh, but we have every single berry in the game, and now it's just finishing out the core. We have this, like, uh, just left to right gauntlet section, kind of. Yeah, the last berry doesn't actually collect until we complete the game, which I think is pretty appropriate. <laughs> And we're coming up to the end of a task here. So a couple of people I'd like to thank. Devil Squirrel for making the original any percent tasks and making the tools. 0x0ADE for making the mod we're running the tools on right now. And Demo Jameson for, aside from discovering demo dashing, making some pretty big improvements to the task tools. And time. time. So, we actually have one bonus level for you today. I have had, I think, four people ping me on Discord and ask me if we're doing this, so I know people are excited about it. And we're actually going to be doing a seaside. Seasides are really hard, but really short levels. This one is only four screens. And before we do this, I'd like to just say, if you want to learn more about what we do or you want to get into the speed running, speed running this game, we have a Discord. You can find it by going to Celeste on speedrun.com. We have a channel specifically for tasking, and there are a couple pinned messages in that channel that describe most of what you have seen today. Yeah, and Task Videos also has a, uh, in the resources section, has a little page on some of the tech we use in this run. Yeah, and this level, the insanity you're out to see was made possible by Daluke and Kalei. So huge shout out to those two. And with out of the way, let's start this. This is your dessert. You've paid for this. Uh, oh. oh, well, okay. Okay, now let's go. Okay. What? Can input the file? Oh, yeah. That oh, yeah, change yeah. the file, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Please hold. When you were do that. So this framework made by Devil Squirrel is what we used last year. There's also a libtask framework made by Kiwi. 
Uh, we can use that for other submissions, but this particular one was made by the preferred tools. Yeah, LibTAS is really finicky with Celeste. It's a great tool, but this is better. Okay, let's go. So 8C is actually where hyper dashes are taught to you in-game on uh, that screen right there. If you, if you stopped long enough to see it, the bird would have actually taught you how to uh, We use the hyper dash on the next screen in a interesting way. Yeah, watch Madeline Don't blink. here. Don't blink. And with that, that concludes our block. Again, before we before we pass it off, I do want to say thank you to uh, Uni. Thank you so much for everything. Uh, you can find more information about TASs at tasvideos.org. You can find more information about console verification at tasbot.net or tas.bot. You can find us on discord.tas.bot. Highly recommended if you want to be part of our community. We'll see you again at a future GDQ if they let us come back. I hope they do. <laughs> With that, I conclude this box. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. All right, everyone. I do want to cut in before the Celeste people take off their headphones, because I have a special donation for you guys. Uh, I have $250 from Noel Berry. Mm -hmm. And he says, thanks so much for all the support for Celeste over the last year, and to all the people who put so much work into having it at this event, amazing event. Also, I like your jacket, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Noel. And can Thank we get Noel. one more big round of applause for everybody who was involved with TaskBot this year? Thank you so much, guys. <laughs>